Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Chasing the Muses. Today we're talking about indirect characterization. So this is more for my writers. Um, when we go to build characters, uh, and if you haven't seen my first video on direct characterization, I will put it up here in the corner for you. Um, today's is more indirect characterization, and these are things that sometimes we don't really think about when we're constructing um, our characters or going along and writing the action and the dialogue and things. Even though that we always use them, we don't really think about them a lot. So I'd like to introduce some of the indirect characterization methods that we use as authors. Uh, now, the first one of these that I want to stress is one of the most effective that we can use, and that is how other characters see them and interact with them. Not only directly, but indirectly. So, uh, if you have a lead character named Frederick, and uh, maybe his girlfriend sees him one way, but her girlfriend sees him another way. So those two interactions will tell us a lot about who Frederick really is. Um, and we'll go into that uh, in more depth when we do the multiple perspectives uh, episode. I'm saying um, a lot. I will get better at that. So another one is names chosen. Uh, when you name a character, it can tell you a lot about that character. So if you look at a lot of Marvel uh, characters, they're named very distinctively. Uh, a lot of them are have the same first letter. Some of them are telling about who the character is, whether they're a hero or a villain or somewhere in between. So you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, if you look at a, a woman named Prudence, okay, she may be a prudent person. She may also be the opposite of that. So names can tell us a lot about somebody. Maybe you know three Jennifers and they're all wonderful people and they're all very warm and loving. When you know one uh, Susan and she's not. So maybe that taints your, or not taints, I guess, but maybe that colors your perspective of what that name means. And it may for a lot of people, you know, maybe there's a lot of people named a certain thing and it has some very negative connotations as we see in a lot of memes. Um, or maybe it has come to have some negative connotations because of certain memes, but anyway, uh, so names chosen is another one. The next one I want to go over is a little trickier. It's something that we do a lot and don't notice. And it can be good or not so good depending on how you use it. And this is words and phrases that are chosen by the author to describe the character. So... If you say a character has bright red hair that clashed with everything she owned, that's one way of saying she had red hair. And it's not really favorable. So maybe it's a, a different color of red that doesn't, you know, or maybe she has a personality that, that makes it loud. Um, or if you say she had long auburn curling locks or I don't know, whatever purple <laughs> purple phrase you can think of. If you, if you describe that favorably, it will make your reader a little more inclined to see them in a favorable light. If you describe them in phrases and words that are not so favorable, that will also color... Uh, the way your reader perceives that character. So there's those kinds of indirect characterization. 
and we'll do some telling. So when you write, there's a balance between showing and telling, and we always think it should be more showing than telling for obvious reasons, because we want the reader to be in there and experience it. But there is a certain amount of telling that you can do, and in that telling can be some indirect characterization. It's not something we do or think about a whole lot. Generally, we use the first method, which is the, uh, the way other characters see them and interact with them. Let me try that again. So I'll break it down to three things. Uh, how other characters see them, talk to them, and interact with them, uh, and talk about them. Two would be their names that are chosen. And three would be the words and phrases the author uses to talk about them. I'll leave the bit about telling off because that's kind of attached to the last point. So there's our indirect characterization toolbox. I hope you'll join us for the next installment of Chasing the Muses. Uh, a lot of it is writer-centric, simply because that's my main call, is writing. But uh, we're going to have some other things, too. General creativity tips, things to help get you in the mood to create, whether it's writing, painting, drawing, making crafts, all kinds of things. So, stay tuned for the next episode. Episode. Ah! Can't talk! <laughs>